Hi, welcome to a Roboflow training movie. In this training movie, um, I'm going to uh, show you how to fix a category tree managed by a watch folder of Roboflow. For those of you who are not familiar with a uh, watch folder, uh, watch folder workflow synchronizes the content of a folder to a catalog. So whatever is in a folder structure on disk will automatically be cataloged and synchronized to um, uh, to the catalog. So um, if something is changed, it will automatically update the catalog if the, when the workflow runs. Now imagine that uh, this also means that it can create uh, automatically categories uh, managed by Roboflow. These are not the same categories that Roboflow create. You can enable, keep them enabled or disable these if you don't want them. The disadvantage of the ones that Canto creates or Cumulus creates is that they have these uh, levels that you may not want in your catalog. There are ways uh, to fix that. But even then, when you start uh, renaming uh, categories and etc., or even uh, removing records from a folder, uh, then this category tree will not be maintained by Cumulus itself. So when you use a watch folder to synchronize the catalog, Roboflow takes care of this category tree and also cleans up any, any empty categories, etc. Now imagine that uh, by accident, uh, a user maybe uh, deleted uh, a category. And so yeah, in that case, now suddenly these records don't have a category anymore. That's not a problem. You can check your catalog easily to know if, if this has been the case just by looking for categories. And then you can say uh, is not or does not contain uh, dollar categories. And I'll just, just first do a find all and then do a find. And then you can see it comes back to those four records. So it needs to fix uh, those. You could go in here, manually create them and for four records, assign them. That's fine. But what if uh, it's a thousand records or if it's a whole category tree that by accident they threw away? What you should do is, uh, or what you can do is fix this with another workflow. You could even have this workflow run every week just to make sure that uh, the categories that might have been deleted by somebody uh, are uh, nicely uh, replaced uh, and put back in place. Um, so uh, how do we do go about this? First thing that is important is that you go and have a look at your asset reference. You need to specify the same asset reference as you see it here, not with the fancy description. This is uh, of course just D colon backslash temp, but very often in a network environment, uh, this will be a backslash backslash server name backslash etc. That's the path you need to use. So you should make sure that uh, you have a look at this part and then take a look at the starting point here. You see that your starting point is watch Roboflow screens. This is this folder. So the part in front of that needs to be thrown away. So that's uh, the part you need to remember. Then. I have a workflow called uh, tool rebuild category tree and I'll show you how it works. Um, so I define the catalog, I take a query, it's a hot collection workflow, searches for records, it searches for those records that do not have, that do, does not contain dollar categories and that will come up with those records. Then you can set the root of the category you want to, uh, where you want to create uh, the category tree. And, and then you should specify the part that needs to be skipped. As I said, if it's a network park path, don't use drive letters because Roboflow does not, uh, Cumulus, sorry, does not store drive letters. It stores the UNC path. So it needs to be the UNC path. So I'm saying skip this part. And then it will also, in this example, I added that you can uh, maybe uh, add some things that could also be wrong with your catalog. If you want to find if an asset is offline, uh, then uh, it will also assign a record to a special category. So you can create these categories 
if you want them. Um, <clears throat> uh, what do I do in my workflow? I pick up uh, the record ID, record name, but then I pick up the asset reference folder. That's the folder path of the asset reference. Then I check if the asset is available. If it's not available, I will assign it to that category offline assets. And then if it is available, I'm testing if the path starts with uh, the root. If it doesn't start with the root, then it's a, a malicious, mis miscellaneous uh, record maybe from somewhere else. And that could be, you can have files that are not in the watch folder still uh, be part of a catalog. Um, but it will just assign them to a separate cat category, uh, just so you know, look, these ones I did not verify or fix. If it does start with uh, that specific path, it will replace that root uh, that you defined by a slash, and it will replace any backslashes that might be in that path by a normal slash. And then that's how it creates the category path by concatenating the root category that you specified and the record path uh, that uh, that it found or that it calculated and it writes that to the log and then returns from this if test so and then in the end it's going to create that category if it already exists don't worry it's not going to break anything it's uh, just going to pick it up if it exists and then it is going to assign it to the record. So a very uh, simple, straightforward workflow to fix uh, the problem. So if I now run uh, that workflow, I can have a look, show log, and it has found a couple of records, namely four, and it takes uh, a new category and it says, okay, I'm uh, creating that category. And then it goes to the next record and next and next. And that's how it processes the four categories and sorry, the four records. And now automatically, here's our third back. And if I go to second and I go to third, there are our four records assigned to it. And so that's a very neat uh, and easy way to fix uh, your category three should a user uh, have messed it up. Uh, you can even, uh, worst case scenario, you can even throw, uh, throw away the whole category three and start over again if you really think, okay, the user has started renaming those categories, etc., etc., which it should not do because you have RoboFlow running in a synchronization mode, which is trying to keep those two in sync. Uh, so a user should not have the permission to do that. No problem. You just run the workflow and it will rebuild that whole tree. One thing that you should keep in mind is that that tree that it creates um, uh, here, of course, uh, does not have any information about metadata that might have been stored in the category itself. Uh, uh, it will fix uh, the category, but it, it cannot recover any metadata that might have been stored there. And very often this functionality is not used, but should it be used, keep in mind that uh, that still might be an issue to take a look at. So thank you for joining this uh, little training movie. I hope this was useful and I see you in the next one.